The whole thing started in World War One. What is Cinemascope? The anamorphoscopic lens for the Cinemascope system. We see more horizontally than vertically. Cinemascope is destined to bring a new era in the motion picture. Nice flares. Great image quality. We refuse to settle for something secondary. Hey guys, Chita Fahadens here to continue the series. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the exact steps you need to take to build and understand your anamorphic rig in order to shoot cinematic and high production value footage. I'm sharing the whole blueprint with you, so get pen and paper and pay attention. It has taken me almost 10 years to figure this out and perfect it, so stop whatever you're doing and take notes. In the last three videos, I talked about why a streamlined approach to anamorphic shooting is the only realistic way to achieve a production-ready rig, and I explained what should be in your mind as you look for an anamorphic lens, instead of going evil queen like, what's the fairest of them all? I also showed you that the camera you have right now is a good fit to start shooting anamorphic instead of pushing your plans back in favor of anamorphic modes. In case you haven't watched the first three videos yet, you should do that right away because they're filled with valuable, practical information on how you can get started right now. Now the recap's out of the way, let's jump into the roadmap to build a bulletproof anamorphic rig and perfect it fast to your style of shooting. The first step before you even start thinking about buying lenses and getting your hands on gear is to understand the importance of anamorphic lenses in the history of film. Why does the anamorphic look, a thing from 1950, hold such high importance and value even in modern times? Before you start any film project, you should assess the project's needs and if your rig is a good match for it as is. Does the style of the project require or allow you to adjust features like adding or reducing weight, boosting or reducing the vintage vibe, using an onboard or remote fall focus, and so on? Understanding how old Hollywood made it work is key to figure out what you can aim for. A little history provides us with inspiration for many creative and technical choices. If you've watched the second video in this series, then you already know a little bit of the path to find a lens that matches your style of shooting, but there's a lot more to it. You should understand how anamorphic lenses work to squeeze the best performance out of them. Once you have that covered, you need to figure out how to get the most out of your camera. Is full frame the way to go? Is a speed booster a good idea and why? How do you get a de-squeezed image for proper monitoring on set? Is any monitor good for that? Is there an ideal budget camera? Then we have to understand the spherical blocks of any anamorphic lens. In a DIY rig, these are called taking lenses. There are many factors to take into account here. Coatings, mounts, aperture, size and weight. The spherical block or your taking lens plays a big role in how bokeh will look once you add anamorphic glass on top of it. Plus, you gotta figure out your focal length equivalences and balance the magic triangle of spherical or taking lens, focal length, sensor size, and anamorphic squeeze. I guess it's not a triangle, it's a square. The reason I'm reinforcing the idea that these are spherical blocks and not just taking lenses is because that allows us to take into account full body cinema anamorphics as well as DIY setups when looking at our options. With camera and spherical lenses covered, it's time to pick our anamorphic. Is bigger better? Cheaper better? Do we want it to look vintage or sharp and clean? What's the waterfall effect that so many people talk about in anamorphics? Why is bokeh oval and will any scope give you that bokeh? How does uh, your scope focus. Will you need a variable diopter? If yes, which one? Or even what is a variable diopter? After making these decisions, you still have to piece it together in the most effective possible way, shedding the most weight whenever possible and never compromising in terms of image quality and performance. Rigging is the most important thing to save time on set. Knowing and rig inside out and understanding the pieces that need to move is the soul for making your anamorphic production ready. 
when everything is properly assembled, there are still important things to do before hitting record. You have to run focus checks and account for focus shifts. You should know if your setup breathes too noticeably. And I'll show you how to shoot distortion charts for post-production. Most importantly, I'll show you how to use diopters properly to take bokeh to the next level. After the project is shot and backed up, I'll show you how to put together the best post-production workflow, taking footage through de-squeezing and cropping to the desired aspect ratio to make editing smoother. Plus, we'll look into small fixes such as how to handle misaligned shots or mumpy looking shots or crazy warpy shots. All of this and a lot more is covered in my upcoming anamorphic cookbook course. I'll show you in detail how to get the best use of the sensor area in your camera, as well as what characteristics make good sphericals or taking lenses and how they complement the character of your anamorphic. You can watch over my shoulder as I walk you through all of this and you can just implement it step by step. So make sure you subscribe to the channel now for when the cookbook launches because this is the best information I've ever put out. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up for the mailing list at anamorphiccookbook.com. The link is also in the description so you can get notified as soon as new content is up. In the next video, I'll share an example of what it looks like once you're set up and running with your rig and understanding every piece of it. If you're excited about the cookbook, remember to click the like button uh, before you go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Tschüss, Verhältnis.